So, Married at First Sight, um, season 14. We are in Boston, and uh, looks like all of the couples are married now or close to being married. I don't know. The show is two hours long. So, I, usually I try to watch these shows twice before I review them, but I can't sit through four hours of this. So, I'm going off the cuff of what I do remember. Um, and I'm just going to give you all my. Uh, opinion and prediction for each of the couples. So let's start with um, Jasmina and Michael. Let me first say that I think Jasmina is absolutely gorgeous. She is probably the prettiest um, bride we've seen on this franchise so far. Um, you know, she's a, a, a sad backstory, but I think it's that story that's going to make her work hard for this relationship because Michael seems like a really good dude. He also has some some trauma in his background. I think both of his parents have passed away. Um, I think that these two could be good for each other. She hasn't said if she's attracted to him or not. Um, you know, he thinks she's gorgeous, obviously. He'd be blind not to. But when they talk to her about the spark, she did kind of hesitate. Um, but she does strike me as the kind of person who is... Um, open-minded enough to to look beyond the initial attraction or lack thereof and to see who he is as a man um one thing about her she's so dry like I, there were several times when she made jokes and i didn't, couldn't tell if she was joking or not um so she she's gonna require a little bit of a, um patience as far as like is she is she checking me? Is she joking with me? You know, he's there's gonna be a learning curve with her, but I do think that they um, can work. I I see good things for this couple. Again, the honeymoon is always the, the the telling factor, and of course, once they move in together, so you know everybody seems happy on the wedding day. So we shall see. But I am giving these two a thumbs up, and I'm hopeful for them. Okay, so now this couple, Katina and Elijah another beautiful woman i'm telling you they they knocked it out the box with these beautiful women this season um uh, this is the couple i think i remember the most and because i felt invested in their story because i don't think this is a good match katina says she's a former party girl you know she's trying to settle down um Olajuwon says he's a former playboy what's his alter ego name um Isaac or something like that I don't know but he kept referencing this dude throughout the whole setup before the wedding and talking about this dude like he was a real person his alter ego or whatever um I don't like it I think that he is going to default to his former ways um I think he, I think I heard him say before that all of his friends are getting married or something like that. And if that's the case, I hope it's not a case of, listen, I ain't got nobody to hang out with no more. So let me just go ahead and get married. Um, his being on the show strikes me as odd because he's a good looking guy. He seems like he's charismatic and he's all these things. So I imagine he's probably run across a lot of good women who probably would, would want to marry him. Why is he not? Why did he pursue any of those relationships and why did he feel like he needed to start with a clean slate? That leads me to believe that he has done so much damage that he can't even go back to the well because all these women who he's dealt with know who he is. And his best shot was to start with a clean slate with somebody he doesn't know. Evidence of this is when they were about to walk down the aisle and he said he had a concern that she might know him or she might have, he might know somebody she might know somebody he slept with. I mean, y'all in Boston, it's a huge city. If you are that concerned about your body count, it tells me you've been doing a lot of dipping. Um, yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. You know, and he just strikes me as young and a little arrogant. You know, he said the whole thing about a woman got to be able to cook and blah, blah, blah. And, but, and I understand that a, a lot of men want that, but it sounded like it was a deal breaker. Um, you know, when he, when they got married, they were at the altar, he was telling her how beautiful she was. And he was like, so what do you think about me? Like he wanted a compliment back. Like there's something about him that gives me narcissist and, um, I don't like it. And I don't like it for Katina, especially since she said her past, she's been cheated on a lot. Um, so I just hope they don't both just default to him going and doing what he does and she going and being, you know, the victim of some kind of playboy. 
Um, it also seems like their relationship might be surface because they're both good looking people. And I think in the beginning, it's going to be all about, you know, ooh, look at all the tattoos and look how attractive they are. Look how good we look together. Um, but, but the substance is what I'm, I'm worried about. And Elijah Wan look like he doesn't have a lot of substance. Katina may or may not, I'm not sure, but, um, I don't know. I'm not feeling this couple. I feel like this is going to be some real contentious um, door slamming, locking people out the house, screaming and arguing and crying and throwing things kind of relationship. They both strike me as emotional and um, high energy. It just it seems like they're just going to knock heads. I, I see explosions and not in a good way. So I am going to have to give them the thumbs down. Noi and Steve. I don't really know too much about them. Like, I don't, I know the one thing about Steve that everybody's talking about is that he doesn't have a job. And a lot of people are saying that it was irresponsible of the matchmakers to put him in the mix if he doesn't have a job. But I got the impression that he's some type of engineer or some kind of professional where he can find a job easily if he wants to. He just decided to take time off. So I'm less concerned about that and more concerned about his personality where it seems like he might get bored quickly or he likes to experiment and he likes to to um experience new things and i'm hoping that this marriage is not one of those things um noi is adorable i think she has a great energy and spirit about her um, i hope she has more of a backbone than bow did last season um because i had the same feeling about bow in the beginning but then she let uh what's his name johnny whatever his name is, walk all over her. Um, but they're cute. They're a good looking couple. So I don't know much and I don't know enough, but I think by the time we watch, I watch the next episode, I'll have more input on them. But y'all let me know what you think about these two. If, you, if I miss something, tell me about it. Okay. Alyssa and Chris. Alyssa is a firecracker and I think already people are not feeling her. Um, we know that she and Lindsay don't like each other already in that, um, Lindsay had, she had blocked Lindsay from social media, uh, because of some interaction he had before in, and Lindsay had said she didn't even remember that she was a part of the show and that she seems boring, you know, but to Alyssa's defense, she's not here to make friends. She's not here to, to, to come up with new girlfriends. She's here to meet a husband. So, uh, she doesn't have to fool a lot with y'all. But I get it, you know, if you sign up for this, you know, you should be a team player and play nice in the sandbox. She seems a little rigid. She said something about buying 10 dresses because she wanted to make sure. Um, that gave me pause because if you will do this show and let them pick a husband for you, but you won't let them pick a dress, um, it, I get control freak a little bit here. And, and I don't think this is the type of show for control freak. Um, I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt for now because I don't know enough information about her. And if I judge her, it's going to be just based off of what other folks have said. And like I said, I, I watched the episode, but I do need to um, kind of dig my teeth in it, which I did not. And she, she was a little towards the end of the episode. And I think I was starting to nod off at that point. But um, I don't, I, but I, based on what I've seen, I don't see a love connection here because she seems like she's very rigid and he seems like he's a people pleaser and I get the impression she might walk all over him if he doesn't meet up to her specifications. So for now, I'm going to give them the thumbs down, but you know, I'm going to reserve judgment for the next episode. Mark and Lindsay, there's always one, um, always one woman or one dude who is just, um, unpredictable and I see Lindsay is going to be that one we saw she was they were the first couple to get married she was drunk she was belching she was a lot she wouldn't stop talking and Mark as much as he seems easygoing and he it's, he really really wants this is his second time um, on the show or, or trying out for the show he, I think even his patience might be um, stretched thin with Lindsay because she is a lot and like I said before, I'm giving her a pass because she has some um, some tr trauma in her past. You know, she's a, a strained relationship with her mother. And, you know, those kind of things shape people. So I will give her a little bit of grace, but she's a lot to handle. 
and I think um, Mark is going to have his hands full and he's going to have to, he's going to need the patience of Jesus in order to deal with her. Um, and maybe he has it because like I said, he wants it so bad. And we saw that like none of his family showed up at his wedding. Um, you know, I think his father has passed, his mom, his grandmother are sick and you know, he wants family. So when you want something really bad, you will accept things you normally wouldn't for the sake of the bigger picture. And I think that's what he's going to try to do. Um, but I also think Lindsay wants this. And so I think if Mark just gives it to her one good time and, you know, checks her and, ha and tells her to calm down, she might fall in line because she wants this as well. She has to know she's a lot. It's not the first time she's heard it. And if she thinks it's going to jeopardize the future of her relationship, maybe she'll tone it down a bit. And I'm hoping that that's what happens. Um, but as I see it right now, I don't see it for them. I do think that this is all going to come to, it's going to hit a boiling point um, because she is just, like I said, she is a lot to handle. So I could be wrong. You know, I've been wrong before, but as it stands right now, I'm also going to give them the thumbs down um, because I think she's, she's going to sabotage this relationship. So there you have it. That is my review for this week's episode of Married at First Sight in Boston. Um, we are just getting started. It's going to be a roller coaster ride, I am sure. This show always delivers, gives us so much to talk about. Um, we will see what happens. If I am correct about any of my predictions or if I am off course, please like, comment, share, and most importantly, subscribe to my channel. When I post these, you will get a notification so you can join the conversation and we can talk about it week to week, talk about our predictions and all the foolishness that we are going to watch this season. Um, it looks like it's going to be a good one. So let me know what you think. Drop down in the comments and let's talk about it. And I will talk to you next week.